This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. <coughs> there is an ancient Midrash that is describing the way that the souls came down to the world <coughs> before of our generation in the earliest generation. The Midrash is talking about a noble group of souls that were very, very close to the core, to the source of good in heaven before of time, before of creation. Those noble souls had a desire to reveal the good of the Almighty to the world. Because the world was covered with darkness and there was no light in the world at all. And those noble souls, they asked permission from the Creator to be His messengers and to deliver His light to the world in many ways. Those souls <coughs> are enjoying a unique light, a hidden light that is called Or Haganuz, the hidden light. And they're the only one that have access to that light when all the rest of the world stays in darkness. The reason why they receive that access to that divine source of light, to that holiness, is because that their mission <clears throat> is one and only to give and to share and not to keep any of that light for themselves. That's why the Creator saw them as worthy <clears throat> to enjoy that light because the real will of heaven is to spread that light <clears throat> to all the souls. Now why, if the desire of the Creator to spread His light to all of His children, so why that He will give it only to those few ones that will be appointed and in charge on the generations? Because the Creator, He sees that we still don't have the vessels the tools, the power to enjoy this fantastic light. And because the Creator wants us to receive it fully, completely, so for that He put people in charge, those righteous ones, those noble souls, that they will give to every person the amount that he deserves. Not deserve because He is not righteous enough, or holy enough, or pure enough. We're not talking about, hey, I'm going to check if you deserve or not. We're talking about an ability to contain capacity. What you will receive that will become blessing inside of you, that's what the Creator wants to give you. But if that amount that you will receive, now a person earned won the lottery, one billion and a half. It's, it's an amount that people cannot discuss. Like, what you're going to do with this money? Like, it's a number that it's more scary to win that number than not to win it. And everyone says, no, I, I, I will know what to do. Everyone can talk. But the number of people <laughs> that really lost their minds because of receiving huge amounts of money, and it's not only money. Also, children are like that. Children is happiness. Great. You have one child. 
only in the beginning, first two weeks with the baby born, you don't know what to do with yourself. You don't know. You lost your sleep. You lost your appetite. You lost everything. You're, you're, like, and you need to learn how to function. And then you need to go. And then you have a second child and a third child and families that are not thinking and not planning and finding themselves with eight children. It's a destruction. It can break and crack and break the house. Things can be too hard, <coughs> even though that it's pure bounty. It's holy souls, it's amazing, fantastic people, it's children, it's amazing. You need vessels. You need the tools. In everything it's the same. You're thirsty, you want to drink, you want to receive the water in the right amount and in a cup. You don't want someone to spill the whole river onto your face. You don't, you, you, that's not what you asked for. You want the amount that is measured to you in the right capacity, in the right amount that, that you will be able to enjoy from it. And the Creator saw that. And He sent those righteous ones, those holy noble souls, to each generation that they will spread the light. Now every one of those souls, those righteous ones, is in charge on a different kind and unique special light. Not in every generation, not in, in all the generation, the test and, and the light is different. It's not similar in every generation. In certain generations the test was to be ready to kill yourself for the respect of God. In different generations, you had to serve the Creator out of poverty. And that was a mission generation. In different ones, there was a temple built, and you should serve the Creator out of wealth, and glory, and happiness, and satisfaction, and just to praise Him, and, 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 and to walk for two weeks to, to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. Every generation, you have different tests. So the light that is being provided to us by those noble ones is also different because that light is giving to us the access, the knowledge, the power of understanding how to connect ourselves to the Creator in the right way based on the mission of that generation. All those righteous ones, they're being called builders and they're the ones that are building the temple. Now the third temple is not a regular <laughs> physical temple built from stones. The third temple is a temple that built from holy stones that are the souls of the holy tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. Not only the Jewish people, because the Jewish people are representing one tribe maybe two tribes with the tribe of Levi and they are only one section of the complete unit that is called Am Israel. Now the Creator when He chose Abraham and He inherited him the Holy Land of Israel He told him I'm gonna inherit that land to you and your seed to your children. Now from Abraham came two children, main children, known children to the world the first one that born was Ishmael, but then Hashem, the Creator, told Abraham, but I will inherit what did I promise to you from your wife Sarah, and not from Hagar. And that's why Sarah got pregnant later on, and then she brought to the world Yitzchak from Abraham. So Yitzchak, he was the one that been blessed in that blessing that Hashem blessed Abraham. Yitzchak also had two children. One of them was Esav, and the second one was Yaakov. And Hashem gave the blessing to Yaakov. There was a whole argument between Esav to Yaakov, and they were arguing. And in the end, Yaakov was wiser, and he achieved something from Hashem from heaven, that Hashem blessed him, that Hashem made his father Yitzchak choose him and blessed him. So all the blessing that passed from Abraham to Yitzchak passed to Yaakov. Now Yaakov blessed all of his children. 
and we're talking about 12 tribes. One of the tribes was the tribe of Yehuda. Fantastic, amazing tribe. When King David, he was the king of the tribe of Yehuda, but he was also the king of all of Am Israel. But in his generation came down a decree from heaven that his kingship will be separated, <coughs> will be torn but not in his generation, just in the generation of his child, Shlomo, King Shlomo. In the generation of Shlomo, the kingship been separated to two camps, the camp of Yehuda and the tribe of Levi joined them, and the camp of Israel, ten holy tribes. And the ten tribes went with their king, and Yehuda and Levi tribes, stayed with the kingship of King David after a few generations came a king named I think his name was Sancheriv and he exiled the ten tribes away from the Holy Land to the unknown across a river that is called Nehar Sambation the Sambation River now there are many legends and many theories where are the river and where are they behind the mountains of darkness or before no one knows exactly maybe there are some righteous people that do know but in reality all that story took place 3000 years ago so no matter no matter where they went to they already went away from that place now where are they they're here. They are us. They are all over the place. We're talking about people. We're talking about people that left that land and went to another land that <coughs> that were <coughs> facing challenges in one land and moved to look for, for salvation in a different place. And you have many, many people today that feel related to the holy nation of Israel and feel connected to the Jewish people and they're not Jewish at all and their souls are screaming I want to learn Torah I want to serve Hashem I want to know Hashem I want to pray I want to put filin I want to visit Jerusalem I want to see the holy land I feel like I'm one of you guys and they love the, the, the IDF they're donating <laughs> to, to the land of Israel they, 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 Whatever, their heart is, 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 is a flaming fire of pure passion to join the nation of Israel. And, and, and they're Gentiles. You cannot recognize their connection because they don't have the same tradition. Now, Jewish people, they have a stronger tradition because the Jewish tribe, the tribe of Yehuda, been blessed by Hashem to keep the, the torch of Torah to be observant until the last generation. This is why you can recognize the Jewish people very easily. You can, because they had a certain blessing that kept them united and kept them serving the Creator based on the ancient tradition. And they've been blessed in keeping that torch and illuminating and shining it to the wide world. Now, Many people today, even in the Jewish world, are not being so observant and don't really know the purpose and the mission of, of their lives. And they just live certain, like, regular life without understanding the importance of them being Jewish. But the other people from the ten tribes of, of Israel, they are completely lost in their connection to tradition because they've been separated very early from, uh, from, from the tribes of Yehuda. And when they've been separated was before of the time of the Tanaim and the Amoraim that wrote the Mishnayot and the Gemara before the time of Rabbi Akiva, before the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, before the time of all those known and famous righteous people that set the rules of halakha, of Jewish rules for us, the Jewish nation, Jewish people today. So the ten tribes left very early. 
in days that we were still sacrificing animals on complete stones, altars, in the middle <laughs> of the field, without the temple, before the days of glory, before the days that the Shulchan Aruch been written, before the days that we became to be Amma Sefer, the nation that are holding the book, that are learners and scholars, before those days. That's why it's very hard for those ten tribes to understand <laughs> how to come back to their roots. So, what's the mission? What's the purpose? What should we do? The mission is, first of all, to recognize, to understand, to realize that we are here in a world that its purpose is much, much deeper than we assume. It's much deeper than keeping Shabbat and eating kosher and lighting the holy candles of Hanukkah in your house. Of course you need to do it. Of course all those things are fantastic. That's our tradition and we must keep our tradition and keep on passing the torch to the next generation. But what that is going undercover, what that the Creator is planning to all of us, that in one moment from the ground from the unknown, from the complete darkness, will reveal is a complete redemption of 12 tribes that will rise from the ground in no time. In no time, suddenly, you're going to have hundreds of millions of people that will ask the Creator with such flaming fire and holy desire that they will know Hashem and they will know their legacy from within. They won't need no proofs. They won't need no evidence. They won't need no rabbi to tell them what to do. They will go like lions to conquer the temple, to conquer the holy mountain of Jerusalem, of, of, of Zion. Lions going to start running toward Jerusalem when, when the spirit of Mashiach will be revealed in the world. Now we need to understand how to reveal, how to help that poor guy Mashiach to, to come out from the darkness. Now the Rambam is saying something fantastic <coughs> that I wanted to share with you. The Rambam is saying that Christianity and Islam, both of those gigantic religions, made a huge favor to Am Israel. Why? Because they are helping Am Israel prepare themselves for Mashiach. How? They're Christians, they have their faith. They're Muslims, they have different faith that contradict that faith. And both of those faith, faiths con contradict ours. So, like, they have one Mashiach, they have a second Mashiach, and we have a third one. So now, how can it be that <laughs> then this butterfly, green butterfly chose me. <laughs> it hit me. <laughs> just, it just hit me that a that few years ago I spoke about it and I said, you can come back, it's okay. <laughs> Rod, give me a seat. He sat on my on my bed. You have a seat here. Welcome to sit. Join us. So I said a few years ago that we already received a green light. A green light. It was a green, it's a green butterfly, so it's a green light. It's it's we have a green light from heaven to execute our mission. Really, to go big time and to reveal to the world the light of Hashem. You're making fun, I see. It's okay. You're happy. Proud of you. Our mission is to be those ones to represent the, the real truth to the wide world, to the nations. Now, we need to believe in it. We need to live it if we want to, to present it to other people. You cannot go and distribute something that you don't believe in. Oh yes, you don't know, it's an amazing book, buy the Bible, take the Bible, oh, it. like that's not it. You need to really have that solid faith inside of you that people will see that spark in your eyes that you know what you're talking about. You need to live it. You need to live this <coughs> faith. 
to be a believer. <coughs> now, how can it be that three different opinions are helping and creating something together? How can it be that Christianity, that we're waiting for Jesus to come back and to redeem the world, and Islam that are waiting for Muhammad to come back and to redeem the world, and Jewish people that are waiting for Mashiach ben David, someone unknown, hoping for him to come, that he will come and redeem the world. How can those three faiths are, are supporting the, the, the Jewish one? How the Rambam is, is bringing this claim, this, this, this assumption? So the Rambam is saying like that. The Christians and the Muslims, they are two huge religions that for hundreds of years are planting in the minds of their believers that there is Mashiach. That they are waiting for someone. That one will come and redeem them all. And they're just waiting. And they are waiting. And they're waiting for their Jesus to come. And they're waiting for their Muhammad to come. And we're waiting for our Mashiach to come. And everyone are sitting and waiting. Now the thing is that why is it helping? Because in reality, when the real Mashiach will come, no one will argue anymore. There will be no more problems anymore. Everyone will recognize, hey, that is the one that we were waiting for him. There will be no more questions. No, no, but what's his name is? His name is Jesus. His name is Muhammad. His name is David. What's his name? No one will ask. They will see in his face that he's the one that we were talking about him. And no one will have no more questions anymore. And that's how those all three religions are doing something similar in a way that are waiting for something good to happen for a real Mashiach to come. It's simple that people will make up stories and will create legends to feed their children before they go to sleep in days of hunger, in hours of war, in days of poverty, in hours of plagues and darkness. It's simple that people will make up <laughs> legends and stories and will build a certain faith and, and, and to, to, to heal themselves, to give themselves hope for life. It's simple that people will make up stories and will, uh, will plaster reality a little bit. We don't need to be so judgmental and to go and to hate and to know you are wrong and not to go and to fight. Listen, that believer, you know why he has that faith? Because that's, those are the stories that his mother was telling him since he was born. And he doesn't have a different aspect on life. And that's what he learned. <coughs> and his mother, you know why she told him those lies? Because that's what her mother told her when she was a little kid. You're going to call it lies. You don't know. You don't know what the roots of their faith is. And you don't know where is it coming from in the roots. And we need to have patience to all people, to all nations. And not to think that we are better than no one. Because we are not. And I'm talking about myself. I know that I'm not better than you. I know that I'm not better than no one. The only thing that I know that I am who I am. Now, with that treasure that I received to be who I am, with those tools, I need to go and do my job. You have different tools. Go do your job. You have a different ability, different talents. You need to go and use them to serve the truth. Now, if you believe that there is one truth, you need to understand that that is the core of creation. So if you send someone to find the truth, and he realized that the mission to find the truth is the purpose of his life, you should be confident that he will find it, even if you will not gonna tell him one word about it. Let's say that you think that the way to reach the truth is to be observant based on the Jewish tradition. Let's say that that's your faith, okay? Now there is a person that came from Timbuktu. He doesn't know anything. He came from elsewhere. 
He doesn't know the language. He doesn't know the shape of the letters. He doesn't understand what you're talking at all about. Now you think that you will start sitting with him and explaining to him what he should do. Look, this guy was running away from cheetah when he was young. He was playing with monkeys in the garden, in his backyard. Like, he, they were running, swimming with the hippos in the rivers. Like, what are you talking about? How are you going to convert him, take him to the river? What are you going to do? Like, he was in the, he was, all of his life he was in the river. Like, let him be. You cannot demand from that person, you cannot expect from that person to become like you. You should be crazy to think that you should, both of you should be the same. It's crazy. There's no way in the world, in the nature of your creation, you are different. Animals that wants to live in peace and harmony together does not supposed to be together. Does not supposed to be similar. The zebras and, 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 the, and, and, the, and, and the rest of the animals does not, the giraffes, they don't need to look the same to live in harmony and in peace in the jungle, in the, in the savannah. They should just not attack each other. They should just allow each other to, there is enough space for you to drink as well from the lake, from, from, those, from the water, like, it's okay. Welcome, smile, and that's it. You don't need to convert him. You don't need to change him. You don't need to force him. You don't need to convince him. You need to tell him only one thing. Find your truth. Find your inner connection to the truth. Ask yourself, what is the truth? What's the purpose of my life? And you should have that confidence that when he will search for the truth, the truth will shine from within. Because you, as a truth seeker, as a person that thinks to himself, claims to find some truth in your life, I'm going to ask you, where you find that truth? In the Bible? In the books? In the mouths of the righteous ones? Where you found it? You found it in your heart. You found it when you pray. You found it when you look deep inside to your own being and you realize that there is much more to you than the way you behave, than the way you react, than the way you argue and everything. And you found that inside of you, there is a soul. And you realize that your soul is thirsty. And you realize that the thirsty to a spiritual dimension that really exists somewhere. And that inner search brought you to be a truth seeker. Not the fact that you are Jewish or not Jewish or whatever, to which religion or section you, you are related to. Only your inner desire for the truth revealed the truth inside of yourself. And based on that life experience of yours, you should know that if you will just arouse that person, no matter who he is, to search for the truth, he <coughs> will find it. Because there is only one truth. A Christian person, person will not going to find Christianity to be the truth. A Jewish person will not find Judaism to be the truth. A Muslim person will not going to find Islam, Quran, to be the truth. No. They will all find that to be truthful, to be loyal, to be nice, to be kind, is the truth. And then, if you will feel that he is walking in a truthful path, that he is being honest in the way that he serves the Creator, in the customs of his religion, and he will find himself that he is doing things properly in a right and honest way, <coughs> and he is worshiping the core and the heart of creation, so bless him, he should continue. But if in his search he will find that he is worshipping idols, that he is bowing to the wrong God, to someone that does not really exist, he will keep on searching until he will find the real truth. And he will choose the right religion, so to speak. But I'm not aiming to no religion, because me, even though that I'm Jewish, and I am, and I am orthodox, and I'm observant, and I'm praying three times a day, and I'm putting tefillin, and I'm keeping Shabbat, and I'm eating only kosher. 
I'm not drinking Chalav Israel though, not only Chalav Israel, I also <laughs> drink you, you the... I'm not representing Judaism. I'm not waving the flag of Judaism. I'm waving the flag of truth. I'm telling you, search the truth. You'll find it. When I searched for the truth, I realized it hit me. Hey, you're Jewish. What are you doing with that? And then I started asking questions. If you are, or for an example, Jewish, or one of the lost tribes, you're going to find the reality that you are part of the Israeli nation, and you will click, and it will click. You'll find yourself desiring the Torah, like you, 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 are, you built from it. That's your, those are your bones. Those are your muscles. That's the blood that is running in your veins. If you're an Israeli soul, you're an Israeli soul. I cannot change it. I do, who am I to start talking to you? Do I know who you are? Can I understand the greatness of your soul? From which tribe you are, you are, you are, you are, you are your soul carved? Can I recognize? Can I understand the, like, the, the, the tribe of God, the tribe of Issachar, the tribe of Zvulun, the tribe of Naphtali, the, 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 the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Shimon? Holy, holy angels, who am I? I am from the tribe of Judah. Thank you, Hashem, I'm happy. One of the tribes. He received a certain blessing that made me to be who I am today. But different tribes have a different life story and they've been blessed in different blessings. And they have different skills and abilities and talents that are beyond my reach. I can never understand how great the rest of the tribes are. I don't have a clue. I can only respect them and to wait for their blessings on me. If you will look deep into the Midrashim, to the old ancient strips, the stories on the ten tribes, what that took place in the days when our tribes, our ancestors, went to Egypt, if you will read more than what is written in the Bible, if you will read the ancient stories, you will be amazed from those stories how huge and righteous and pure and powerful they were. How kind and holy and amazing and fantastic they were. They were warriors and they were all brave and strong and powerful with no end. Now can I be judgmental on them? <laughs> Shalom, God forbid. Cannot understand the holiness and the purity and the greatness of those souls. And all those souls and we're talking about hundreds of millions of people, and it's a simple calculation of the numbers. The Jewish nation today are in an amount of something like, let's say, 15 million people, 13, 15 million people today. If the Holocaust would not take place 70 something years ago, we would be twice as much. So today we would be something like 30 million, without all the rest of the decrees that our nation, Jewish nation, went through in the last 2,000 years by the church and by the mosques and whatever we went through in years on years of exile that we've been killed in, in, in the dungeons and, and been executed in the forest for thousands of years we're suffering, we would be a nation of something like 50 million people. <coughs> no, like we said, this is only one, one and a half tribes. You need to make that number time 10. You're talking about something like between 300,000 to, who knows, maybe the rest of the tribes are more blessed than us. Maybe like the tribe of Shimon, they have, you don't know. They're in Pakistan, in Uzbekistan, they're maybe, maybe they're in China, you don't know. You can never know. Maybe you have a billion people over, you don't know. You don't have a clue who they are. And when the spirit of Mashiach will hover above and shake the ground a little bit, all the ashes away, the sadness and depression from our faces, suddenly you're going to see pillars of fire rising from the ground and people going to wake up to say, Hey, I'm also Jewish, I'm also Israeli, I also... Like, like we see that today. We see those things happening today. We have new subscribers every day that are claiming I'm Israeli, I'm Hebrew, I'm this, I'm that. From Africa they're waking up and from Far East they're waking up. 
all over the place, claiming to be Jewish, claiming to be Israeli. So what are you doing with that? It's a movement. It's a huge movement in the world. What that we need to do is to help Mashiach to do his job. That's what we need to do. We need to help the spirit of Mashiach to flow, to hover above every person. So what we need to do, we need to help Mashiach to remove the sadness and the depression from the heads and the souls of our people. To respect everyone and to love everyone and to cherish every moment with every soul. And everyone that you see that he has some spark of good inside of him, respect him and love him and welcome him and let him in and hug him. Support him with all your power. <coughs> And respect him and you will see that he will grow you don't need to change no one you don't need to convince no one if someone asks you answer you don't need to go and teach and you don't need to go and spread you need to shine the simple light of your soul the simple light that is treasured inside of you and every one of us are different and our light is different and you should shine your light, and I should shine mine. <coughs> I will shine to those ones that are surrounding me, and you will shine to those ones that are surrounding you, and together we're going to shine the world, and we're going to wash the filth from the world, and everyone will wake up. And it's not our job to complete, and to finish, and to bring it already. It's happening. What are we doing here? How we woke up. How in the world we woke up. I woke up from nowhere. With no chance. I didn't have no rabbi to speak to me. No one taught me one word of Torah. Nothing. Zero. Nothing at all. From within. Only from within. I was clueless. I was completely unaware to godliness as a child. As a teenager, I didn't know anything. <coughs> Some spirit started to move inside of me. <coughs> this is what that is good in Native Center. <laughs> you can sit and learn and your kids will be occupied. <laughs> One of the good things in Native Center. <laughs> you need to believe in yourselves. You need to count on yourselves like there's no one else, else in the world. And I know that your rabbis, I'm not talking about Rod, I know that he's not like that, he's much more like me than them. I know that rabbis and I know that people around the world are running all over your self-esteem and telling you, oh, you're nothing, you're <coughs> zero, you're far, convert, you want to convert, no, no, whatever, talking and talking and talking. Listen, you're not serving people. We're not serving people. We're serving God. We're serving yeah. Hashem. Serve Hashem. But I want to convert. Listen to me. Do your job and Hashem will take care of you. Do your mission. Be loyal to Hashem. Don't serve people. Don't act and don't play. Don't pretend to be something that you are not. You don't need no stamp and you don't need no approval. And I'm not saying you are Jewish. I'm not saying you're Jewish. I'm saying that if the Creator wants you to convert and to become Jewish, you will find a way to be Jewish. Don't lie, one lie for that conversion. Don't pretend no one moment that you're something that you're not. Be honest, be truthful to who you are. The real righteous rabbis will receive the throne of honor from heaven. And the liars that are destroying communities and humiliating souls will be so humiliated by heaven that you cannot imagine and you cannot understand. You should believe in the truth of your search. 
and you should keep on searching. You should keep on calling the Creator from the depths of your soul. And you should not be scared of no one. We are not serving people. We are here to reveal the faith in one God to the wide world. Believe in yourselves that the Creator, He is the one that woke you up. He is the one that is communicating with you from within. That you are recognizing His individual private supervision on your life with your eyes. And count on that supervision. Let your prayers go out and they will be answered. And you will see wonders and amazing miracles in your lives. Amen. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.